We are here at Leonberg, Germany. We are at TechArts World Headquarters. Back with Kevin, we last saw him at SEMA with the GT Street R Convertible. Today, you've got to share with us what in the world is this crazy thing? Exactly, we have uh, the Tesha GT Street R Flyweight based on the Porsche 911 Turbo S as well. But this one is a much more racetrack oriented and much lighter uh, racetrack version of the GT Street R but still available or possible to drive it on the street. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. So many of us that saw the GT Street R Cabriolet SEMA, we already thought that was pretty wild. This one takes it to another level. 100% uh, correct. So you can see already it's a lot of carbon fiber on that one. And also in, in the interior, we have many, many changes to make it even better on the track, but also for just performance oriented drivers. And as wild as it looks, it's not really about the looks. It's about the performance on track. So if you wouldn't mind, take us for a tour. We'll start from the front of what has changed between a, this started as a base turbo S and then how is it different from your GT Street R as it becomes the flyweight? Correct. So the biggest change uh, in terms of the carbon fiber aero kit compared to the normal or uh, the regular GT Street R is the big carbon fiber front splitter uh, creating a lot of downforce on the front axle. So it's a very well aerodynamically, very well balanced car. It was calculated in the uh, simulator and now on the track during track and test days we counter test our, um, our simulation data and it works really, really well. Um, and that's one of the biggest changes. Also here on the side, we have the big um, canards so more air can flow through, through there as well. And we changed in terms of weight, sa uh, weight saving, we have the mesh here instead of the uh, standard functioning um, wings that are working there. So now this is open for full Air, air to go through and actually you lose weight because you take a lot of the materials that were like the valves that were Correct. opening in the motors, right? Correct. Uh, on the normal, on the regular GT Street R, uh, all the aerodynamic functions from the base model still work. So the wing goes up in the front and the rear, but on this one, uh, everything is fixed. So we have the front splitter, we have the rear wing upper profile always in the high mode. Uh, so that's more racetrack oriented. And of course, the way the hood closes, that's definitely not stock. Yeah, you usually see these uh, fast locking systems on race cars only, uh, but we also put it on the GT Street R uh, because it just makes sense. You lose the locking system of the base model, saving a lot of weight in the front and the rear. As we move to the back, we recognize that these are similar to the GT Street R, the louvers here, the cutouts, but they are a lot more aggressive. Exactly. So we have the cars side by side here and you can see uh, these ones go even far out. We have the mesh underneath so more air can flow out of the tires because more heat is created uh, from the brakes. So that means we need more airflow out of the system. And also, as I look below those vents, the wheels that you have now, these are unique to this car. Correct. Um, we, it's a similar model, so it's still the Formula 6 forged wheel, but it's the flyweight variant. That means all, in general, all products that are more racetrack oriented will be called a flyweight. So that's the, that's the whole concept. And uh, specifically on these wheels, uh, we cut out more of the material, making them thinner and lighter. Now behind the wheels, I noticed the brake setup is still ceramic. It looks like the calipers are no longer yellow. They're now black. Is that uh, the stock setup or did, is that upgraded? So uh, for all Techart models, we can uh, lacquer the brake calipers and match the exterior of the car. In this case, they are black with uh, the yellow writing. Uh, with the Tekka writing, and we use uh, from the base model the ceramic brakes. Now, many of us that track our cars 
as much as we love ceramic brakes, a lot of us tend to swap out for steel brakes. Is that possible with this car? That's possible with okay. this car, yeah. And we also uh, develop with uh, braking fluids that are more heat resistant, as well as brake pads that are more heat resistant as well. Okay. And how about the suspension? Ride height seems actually a bit lower on this one. Is it the similar suspension or is this uh, different? We work closely with our development partner, Ölins. Uh, they are also very sure. popular in the US. Yeah. You guys know them well. Um, and we will have a track day oriented suspension setup, which will be fully customizable in, the, in terms of setup. Now, I also noticed that uh, between the GT Street R and the flyweight, no longer are the aero discs. Correct. Uh, due to the heat, um, uh, same reason with the, uh, with the airflow out here, uh, more heat would be stuck inside the wheel. And for racetrack use, we try to get as much airflow as possible. That's why we don't have the aero discs. Carbon fiber continues with the side mirror. We'll get to the interior in a second. Uh, I noticed the trim along the side also all carbon. The inlet here also all carbon. Correct, correct. Aha, uh -huh. now I noticed there is a very interesting pattern around this rear window and it seems to be not glass. <laughs> exactly, if you knock on it, you can hear it. It sounds much different. It's uh, polycarbonate, so um, it's a much lighter uh, rear, um, uh, rear windscreen. And um, that's also one of the products uh, from the flyweight division, which we will offer for regular 911 models as well. So if you have, for example, a GT3 and you, you like to make your car more track focused, you have single products you can uh, also use from our flyweight division. Now I noticed, you know, every little bit of weight counts in a race car and I, I passed on it, but I noticed it earlier that there is only a single blade <laughs> for the windshield wiper, just like a race car. Yeah, of course. So that's uh, uh, also a lot of style uh, and we, we, it's racetrack inspired. The whole car is uh, race car inspired. So that's a small detail, which only very, uh, <laughs> Uh, enthusiasts would notice. Enthusiasts will notice, exactly. All right, so probably the most prominent piece on this entire car, even though there's visually so many stunning elements, it's the rear wing that really jumps out at you. And uh, to me, this is what tech art is all about. 100%. So it looks spectacular, but of course it's fully functional. So 100% uh, tech art DNA in this, in this rear piece. It's fully carbon fiber. Uh, it's very similar. Uh, to the GT3R, but you can see the end blades are larger and uh, of course the upper rear wing profile is fixed so you can manually change it in various positions uh, depending on the track layout you are driving on. And many of us that have cars that have rear wings and notice and know that in order for it to be effective, the higher up you can get it and get that clean air and, and get it to shape around the car, a purposeful way to plant the rear end, that's why it's so high. 100%, yeah. So it creates a lot of downforce compared to the base model. And um, yeah, it makes sense to have it as high because there's more air able to flow through. Now this is all uh, one piece and uh, compared to the, the factory, well, a factory one would have movable, um, I guess risers and such like that. So all that electronics and metal pieces, that's all gone. It's we, all replaced with a single piece. 100%, yeah. Carbon. Yeah. On the regular GT Street R, it's still fully aerodynamically possible to lower and uh, rise the wing. But on this one, it's always in the attack. It's mode. adjustable, but you manually adjust it. Only the um, angle the of rake. the upper, uh, the rake of the okay. upper wing. So the carbon fiber continues and some unique fasteners in front of the rear wing. Correct. So these one uh, are the same system as on the uh, hood uh, as well. So we lose the locking system, gaining two or three kilos. And so what's the, the total uh, from a Turbo S to this? You're losing weight, even though you've added also a lot of equipment. Yeah. And the total weight difference? Uh, it's around 60 kilogram. So 125, 130 pounds? Yeah. Wow, that's quite a bit. Now, from the back, Probably what's going to be the sight for most people driving with this car is seeing the back of it. Uh, because what is it? Underneath the, the spoiler here is how much horsepower? So we have 800 horsepower. It's our second upgrade kit uh, for, the, for all 911 turbo models. 
Uh, it has new turbochargers as well as changed uh, electronics. And um, we have 950 Newton meter and it does more than 350 kilometers per hour. Oh my gosh, 350 <laughs> kilometers an hour. Tell me a little bit the, the rear diffuser and the intimidating exhaust that it has. <laughs> Correct. So just the lower part, uh, the rear apron looks very similar to the regular GT Street, but the exhaust system is fully empty, so it's the loudest, most brutal GT Street R we ever created. So between the turbocharger and what I'm seeing here, That's there's really... Like there's not a lot no, of holding it no, back. No, no, not at all. Wow. So let's take a look at the interior because it's probably just as unique, if not more, than the exterior of this car. Now, much like with all the tech art cars that you do, the customer can be fully involved with building the car. This is, um, this is the research car. This is zero, zero. You're going to have 19 units. And when customers choose to build this car, they can spec everything from color, from interior to trim pieces, they're almost gonna be all one of one. Yeah, 100%. So we already have uh, the majority of the 19 models sold and I can already say that more, like all of them will be one of one with fully changed paint jobs and liveries. Uh, they will all be very, very individual. So if you wouldn't mind, take us a little tour on the interior. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So we changed a lot in the interior with our Techard manufacturer, which you also saw next door. Um, the biggest change in terms of weight saving are the Recaro podium carbon fiber seats. We work very closely with Recaro Automotive and uh, that's actually one of the most spectacular seats in my opinion. And what we did, we individual, individualized it even further. It has a painted um, outer area in yellow as well. Full carbon uh, fiber? It's, the seat is full carbon fiber, exactly. And uh, it weighs only around 4.9 kilogram, uh, just the shell. So it's a very, very light uh, seat. Sport. And I noticed there's some very unique padding with this seat as well. Exactly. So we changed, um, of course, the, uh, the padding of the, uh, of the seats. So it has a leather covered, it has our contrasting stitching, and as a highlight, we also used uh, 3D manufacturing uh, from our uh, third development partner, Exler, and uh, of course with the fly, and uh, it looks very spectacular with the structure, um, and it's even a bit lighter than the regular seat pads. And I've noticed you've carried the theme of the fly and the stitching from the armrest there, to the steering wheel, to the drive mode button. I did notice that the thickness of this wheel remains thin as opposed to some of your other cars yeah. that have thicker wheels. So for this 100% uh, track day oriented car, it makes sense to use the, um, the base model thickness uh, so you, you have a better access to the, to the um, gear, gear pedals. And behind the seats, you can't help but notice the, uh, the yellow roll bar, of course, track oriented, but then seats are also missing. You're not going to need them, so you yeah. saved weight there. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we got rid a little bit of the foam in the floor or the, the, the floor in general. Mm -hmm. So there's even more light saving there. And of course, you have a more sound uh, getting through to the car because there's less dampening. So that's what you can see, but what happened below. And uh, we have our uh, Techard six point harness um, matching, of course, and working with the roll bar in the rear. And tell us about the door panels because those are also <laughs> matched perfectly. Yeah, like you said, so the theme, the flyweight theme goes through every part, uh, even the door panels, as well as the dashboard. We have the flight uh, embroidered there as well, uh, or embossed. And uh, on the seats, on the door panel, we have uh, the leather structure, as well as contrasting stitching with two different uh, stitching tones. Now, as much as this is a track-oriented vehicle, does it still have the creature comforts of stereo, uh, you know, air conditioning, heat? Um, did you modify that or did you keep yes, that Yes, in this case, so as, a, as tech art, we didn't build a 100% race car, but we still wanted the customer to have a base level of comfort and to be able to drive uh, the car easily from the track and back to the track and also use it uh, daily if 
if wanted. And so this one still has the stereo system um, and it's uh, still a very comfortable uh, model. So a feature that I noticed that we didn't get to when we were talking about the rear end is the inlet at the rear spoiler. Yeah. Is that something, that's on the GT Street R as well. Correct. So you mean these ones, right? Yeah. Exactly. So these are the same shape as on the GT Street R and compared to the base 911 Turbo S, these are additional air intakes with air flowing to the uh, intercooler system. So the question that most people will ask, <laughs> one, is it available? Two, how much does it cost? Uh, we just recently had a world premiere, so one of the 19 pieces, uh, more than half are already taken, or a lot more than half. So there's not many uh, examples left, so you have to be quite fast to get yours. And in terms of pricing, um, if you estimate the base model is around 250,000 uh, uh, euros, and um, then on top for the flyweight package, it's another 200. 60,000 euros net without lacquering or without painting and without installation. So that's also on top. And that's for a truly unique, you choose colors, you choose trim, one of one car. 100%. And how long will it take from the point where they, I think production schedule probably is somewhat of a limitation, but what do you tell customers in terms of the day they put a deposit and the day that they might be able to take delivery? Uh, so production starts next month, so in May, uh, and you can estimate around four to five months build time. So we saw a few tech out cars at Works Reunion Amelia. You guys are also uh, at Unstock, and hopefully one of these will be built by then. And maybe you could ship one over for us uh, US members to be able to see. Yeah, it would be great uh, to already have the first Techa Chichi Street flyweight in the US there, uh, maybe even a customer car, that would be uh, great. Uh, and would love to see you guys in the US. So it wouldn't be a great video unless you got to hear and see this thing moving. So let's get to that. So Kevin's gonna take us for a little ride, just a stroll through the countryside in Germany in this 800 horsepower Tekar GT Street R. Exactly. And uh, I hope you're comfortable in the podium seats. I gotta say, these Recaro podium <laughs> seats are definitely comfy. So how does the GT Street R ride on uh, German local roads? <laughs> yeah, it's a race car, it's quite bumpy. You definitely know you're on a in a purpose-built vehicle here. Yeah, and we are running the hardest uh, possible setup at the moment from our Hockenheim ring test days. So um, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's still the hardest setup so you can go softer. Yep. But uh, you got the full, full experience now. That's right. 